Hello there, church family and guests joining us online. Welcome to the seventh edition of Virtual Worship with Pastor Mark. I pray that you and your loved ones are staying healthy and sane. This is the seventh virtual worship service created to help us worship God as a church family, even though we haven't been able to meet together in our church building for worship. The number seven in the Bible is a significant number. It stands for completion and perfection. Could this be the completion of virtual worship services with Pastor Mark? Could this be the end of the road for this ministry? I wonder. Let me know if you'd like to see these virtual worship services continue in some form, even when we return to worshiping in person on Sunday mornings. Our focus today is on one of the most beautiful and cherished scriptures in all the Bible, the 23rd Psalm. Today, we're going to look at what it means when we say, the Lord is my shepherd. Let us now join together in worship and praise as we praise our Lord and Savior, the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we praise you and thank you for being the Good Shepherd. We know that we can trust you with our lives. We thank you for your leadership and for your sovereignty. Thank you for your guidance and care all the days of our lives. Thank you for restoring our souls giving us peace, and bringing us hope in all of our tomorrows. Thank you for your protection and strength that surround us like a shield. Thank you that we never have to fear. Thank you for your goodness and love that follows after us, that chases us, even when we are unaware of it. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and trustworthy. You are our refuge and hope. You provide us with rest and peace. We praise you for the assurance and hope of our faith. We shall dwell with you forever. Be with us now and bless this time of worship to your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
heavenly meaning. In this parable, Jesus tells of a shepherd who had a hundred sheep. Every morning he took them from the fold, a place where the sheep stayed at night on a hillside and led them to new fresh pastures. The sheep loved to roam and eat all of the lush grass. Later in the day, the shepherd would take them to a quiet stream or, if there wasn't any stream nearby, he would draw water from a well for them to drink. At night, the shepherd took the sheep back to the fold. Every day, the sheep followed the shepherd wherever they took him. He called them by name, and they came to him. Every night, he would count them to make sure they were all there. One night, the shepherd discovered something terrible. He was supposed to have a hundred sheep, but he discovered there were only 99 sheep in the fold. 
That meant that one little sheep was missing. Somehow it had strayed away and became lost. If the shepherd left it there and didn't go look for it, it would most likely be killed by some wild animals. Since the shepherd knew that the sheep in the fold were protected by the gate, he left the other 99 sheep and went to find that one lost sheep. He went searching through the dark, stormy night. He looked and looked in all the places where he had led the sheep earlier in the day. It was a dangerous task, but the shepherd knew that this sheep was lost and would never find its way home. Suddenly, he looked in the distance and saw the lost sheep. It was stuck in a bush and could not get free. The shepherd freed the sheep. Then he put the little sheep on his shoulder and carried it back to the fold. He did not get mad at the sheep and punish it for running away. Instead, he rejoiced and was very happy that he had found the little sheep. In this parable, the shepherd represents God and the sheep represent you, me, and all people. Jesus was showing the disciples that God cares for us so much that he is willing to do whatever it takes to rescue us from the sin of this world. He wants to be our shepherd and lead us in the life that he wants for us. This is today's story about God and how he is our good shepherd. Here is another Bible verse about the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He is the good shepherd. Like our Bible study story today, God is the good shepherd. Just like a shepherd leads, guides, and takes care of his sheep, God does the same for all of us, his children. You see, God is not just a shepherd, but God wants to be my shepherd. God created you. He has amazing plans for you. He knows everything about you, and he knows what you need and when I follow God he gives me all that I need when God is your shepherd you don't ever have to worry about the things you need God provides everything for his sheep isn't that awesome but I must choose to make God my shepherd if you choose to follow him, you will follow him in the greatest adventure of your life. When you follow him into the best things in life, after all, he created you. He knows every detail about you. He wants to bless you, protect you, and be your shepherd. God bless you all. Our scripture today is from Psalm chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Have you received your coronavirus economic impact payment yet? I'm sure you heard that Uncle Sam is giving you money to help stimulate the economy as we go through this pandemic. Eligible individuals get $1,200. Eligible couples filing a joint return get $2,400. For every qualifying dependent child, you get another $500. Now, according to the IRS's website, millions of Americans have already received their stimulus payments. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those millions. Since I applied my 2019 tax refund to my first quarter estimated taxes for 2020, 
The IRS website had a bug in it that didn't allow me to enter my bank account information in for a direct deposit. So I, I'm still waiting on Uncle Sam. However, if you have already received your stimulus payment, good for you. Let me ask you a question. What are you planning to do with your stimulus payment? Will you use it to pay bills? Will you use it for a home improvement project? Will you give 10% or more of it to the church? Offerings have been down recently, and we could certainly use it. Think about it. Will you use it wisely, or will you use it foolishly? The Houston Chronicle recently reported that the Texas lottery sales are surging as COVID stimulus money arrives. Sales of instant scratch-off tickets have surged from the previous week, jumping up $112 million, which is more than $15 million than the same week in 2019. Meanwhile, CNN Business reports that alcoholic beverage sales shot up 55% in the third week of March compared to the same time last year. We humans do some pretty stupid things with our money. Now in the Bible and in ancient times, people are metaphorically referred to as sheep. And folks, this is not a compliment. Sheep do some pretty stupid things. Let me share with you an example. A few years ago, there was a story in the Washington Post about 450 sheep jumping to their deaths. It happened outside the town of Givis, Turkey, while shepherds were eating breakfast. They were surprised to see one lone sheep jump off a nearby cliff and fall to its death. They were stunned, however, when the rest of the nearly 1,500 sheep in the flock followed, each leaping off the same cliff. When it was all over, the local Axum newspaper reported that 450 of the sheep perished in a billowy white pile. Those that jumped from the middle and end of the flock were saved as the pile became higher and their fall more cushioned. Like I said, being called a sheep is not meant to be a compliment. Now sometimes people do things that sheep would never dream of doing. To the best of my knowledge, no sheep has ever been charged with abusing its own lamb. No sheep has ever been charged with stealing from a neighbor or with murder. Sheep don't knowingly abuse their own bodies or minds. They don't hate other sheep who are of a different color or economic level or religion. The foolish things some people do can make sheep seem wise by comparison. Well, today I'm going to be talking about perhaps the most well-known, the most memorized, the most cherished, the most beautiful of all psalms, the 23rd Psalm. It's spoken at weddings with a sense of celebration, excitement, and anticipation. It's spoken at funerals to give comfort in a time of sorrow and loss. It's often the first and only scripture that young children memorize. The elderly quote it and find comfort that few other passages of scripture can give. According to the 23rd Psalm, if we are sheep, then the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now many of us are so familiar with these words that we don't take much time to reflect on what they mean. And that's what I want to help you do today. I want to help you to think about what it means to say, the Lord is my shepherd. So let's begin. First, to say that the Lord is my shepherd is to say that the Lord provides for me. 
Now, one of the primary responsibilities of a shepherd back in Bible times was to provide for the physical needs of his sheep. Sheep need grass to graze on and water to drink. In springtime in Palestine, there's an abundance of green pastures for a flock to, of sheep to graze on. But when summer comes, green pastures are harder to find. It's kind of like my lawn here in Kokomo. Right now in spring, the grass has had plenty of moisture to make my lawn a lush green lawn. But come July, we don't receive much rain. And that combined with the hot weather turns my lush green lawn into dry, brittle, brown grass. So a shepherd's job was to find green pasture for his sheep to graze on. And along with providing green pasture for his sheep to graze on, the shepherd also needed to provide a source of water for his sheep to drink. Now sheep will drink from any source of water they can find, whether it's clean or dirty, whether it's still or rapidly flowing. The danger with sheep drinking from dirty water is that they can become sick, the danger with them drinking from a rapidly flowing stream is that they can easily fall into it and drown. And therefore, the shepherd looked for pools of clean water or some quiet place near a well where the sheep could quench their thirst. The shepherd provided for the physical needs of his sheep, both food and water. Psalm 23 begins by saying, The Lord is my shepherd. Just like a Palestinian shepherd provided for the physical needs of his sheep, so the Lord provides for our physical needs, so we shall not want. Why then do we want so many things? We want a better paying job. We want a bigger house. We want nicer clothes. We want another stimulus check when we haven't even received the first one. We want to be slimmer and smarter. We want to be rid of this COVID-19 coronavirus and all the damage that it's doing to our health and our loved ones and our economy. Our list of wants is ever increasing. And that's the problem. We always want more than what we have and contentment eludes us. Now, if you were to go to a third world country and ask the folks there what they want, their list would be significantly different than your list. They would answer with things that you and I already have, like clean water, food, clothing, a warm shelter to sleep in, reliable transportation, and freedom to worship. Our shepherd provides for our needs, not our greeds. And along with providing for our physical needs, the Lord also provides for our spiritual needs. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. The Bible makes it clear that as sinners we are in desperate need of spiritual restoration and a path to righteousness. The Apostle Paul writes about our pathetic condition in Romans chapter 3, verses 9 through 12, where he says, There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away, they have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. This is the spiritual state that we are in without Christ. But thanks be to God that our shepherd has provided a path for us from being worthless to being a precious, righteous child of God. The Apostle Paul explains how this has come about in Romans chapter 3, verses 22 through 24, where he writes, This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. We have been spiritually restored through Christ's death and resurrection. And now, through the Holy Spirit, we are led in paths of righteousness. In other words, the Holy Spirit gives us the desire and the ability to do what is right, to follow Christ's teachings in our life. 
Now second, to say that the Lord is my shepherd is to say that the Lord protects me. Listen to verse 4 again. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Last month, the London Times reported that French shepherds are being warned to watch their flocks by night as sheep stealing is increasing due to the coronavirus lockdown and fears about food scarcity. In the United Kingdom, where fresh meat is being rationed at supermarkets, criminal gangs have been stealing hundreds of sheep from livestock farms across the UK and selling the meat on the black market. Now, sheep stealing is nothing new. It's been happening for thousands of years. God even gave the Israelites a law about sheep stealing and its punishment. We find that in Exodus chapter 22, verse 1. If a man steals an ox or a sheep and slaughters it or sells it, he must pay back five head of cattle for the ox and four sheep for the sheep. A shepherd is responsible for protecting his flock from thieves trying to steal sheep and from wild animals trying to kill and eat the sheep. And one such wild animal is the wolf. Last March was the 25th anniversary of reintroducing wolves to Yellowstone National Park. Predators like wolves have been eliminated from Yellowstone to provide ideal conditions for raising livestock. But now the wolves are back. And in 2013, Two wolves caused the death of 176 sheep in a single night near Victor, Idaho. Last year, wolves were blamed for killing 800 sheep in Idaho and 300 in Montana. The weapon shepherds used to protect their sheep in Bible times was called the rod. The rod is basically a big club about 30 inches long, and the far end might be studded with nails. And when skillfully swung, it can be used to maul an adversary such as a wolf, a lion, or a bear. And David, the shepherd boy, may have used such a rod to kill a lion and bear that came to attack his father's sheep. And we read about this in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now a shepherd also carried a staff, which is kind of like a walking stick about six feet long, usually straight, but sometimes it had a crook at one end. And it was used to aid the shepherd in walking over rough terrain, climbing hills, and crawling over rocks. It was also used to guide the sheep or even to punish them. A staff with a crook on the end was used by the shepherd to, to lift a sheep or a lamb from a crevice between dangerous rocks. Now just as a shepherd protects his sheep with his presence, rod, and staff, so the Lord protects us with his presence, word, and spirit. The Lord protects us from fear with his presence. We have this promise in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The Lord protects us from sin with his word. David writes in Psalm chapter 119, verse 11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. The Lord protects us from discouragement and despair through the hope that comes from the Holy Spirit. We read in Romans chapter 15 verse 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. To say that the Lord is my shepherd is to say that the Lord protects me, the Lord provides for me, and the Lord personally relates to me. Back in the mid-20th century, there was a German Bible scholar by the name of Joachim Jeremias. He did an extensive scholarly study of all the religions of the world. He studied all their scriptures. There was not one stone he didn't turn over, and he came to the conclusion that when Jesus Christ said that we should call God Abba, Father, he was the first person in the world to do anything like that. Eastern religions don't, Judaism doesn't, Islam doesn't. No one has ever been that radical. No one has ever dared to say, I want to open a door for you to have a relationship with God, one that is intimate and personal. Now the word Abba is an Aramaic word that means father. 
It was a common term that expressed affection and confidence and trust. Abba signifies the close, intimate relationship of a father with his child, as well as the childlike trust that a young child puts in his daddy. World religions are about trying to find salvation through your performance. Christianity is about finding salvation through a personal relationship with God, through God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. There are many folks today, good folks, who've been going to church since childhood. They've memorized Psalm 23 and the Lord's Prayer. They've been given their time, talents, and treasures to various ministries. But they have never had a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. My friend, God loves you. And God wants to have a personal relationship with you. God created you in His image. But He also gave you the freedom to choose whether or not to have a relationship with Him. To have a personal relationship with God, you need to choose Jesus Christ as your Lord, your Savior, your Shepherd. To be a Christian is a deliberate decision to become one of God's own sheep. To have a personal relationship with Him. A number of years ago, there was a little boy who was desperately ill. His parents recognized that he would soon die, and so they sent for a local pastor. The pastor came that night to visit the child who was semi-conscious. He was unable to speak and apparently never spoke to acknowledge the pastor's presence. The parent left the pastor alone in the child's upstairs room with him, and later the pastor left that night. He returned early the next morning after the child had died. He did his best to console the parents. He prayed with them. He grieved with them. Later, the parents asked the pastor if he had any explanation for something that happened. He told the pastor that in the hours before their son died and at the time of his death, he was holding the ring finger of one hand with his other. He died in that position. The pastor then explained what he said that night in the child's room. He wanted to explain to that child on the edge of eternity not only the importance of being a Christian, but in a child's language, how to become one. He said he had taken their son's hand and at first held his thumb and had said, the, because we're talking about one of a kind, the. And then he held his next finger and said, Lord. And for the next finger, he said, God himself is right there. The next finger, my. A personal commitment and relationship. For the last finger, shepherd. One who provides, who protects, who died, who cares for us and who loves us, Jesus. And while the child had not spoken, he had heard. Before he died, he put his hand around his ring finger to say, the Lord is my shepherd. Is the Lord your shepherd? Do you want a personal relationship with the Lord? Do you want Him to protect you and provide for you? If so, I invite you to, to take your hand and put it on your ring finger to commit yourself to having a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ and pray this prayer with me. My Heavenly Father, my Lord, my Shepherd, look at my hands, look into my heart. I commit my life to you. I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. I accept you, Jesus Christ, as my Lord, my Savior, and my Shepherd. I have everything that I need. You provide for me. You protect me. 
You commune with me. You give me the hope of eternal life. I commit my life to you. With my heart and with my hands, I confess today that the Lord is my shepherd. And I pray this in the name of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. Thanks for joining me for this seventh edition of Virtual Worship with Pastor Mark. I hope that you can join me again in the near future for another edition of Virtual Worship. Until then, may God's love, joy, and peace be with you now and forevermore. Amen.